So today we're going to test some water bottle filters and we're going to test it against this. So I'm going to take samples after going through each of these filters and see which ones come out the best. Hurricane Debbie came through our part of North Carolina by the coast a few weeks ago. And I had heard rumors that there would be a big pond here after big storms like Hurricane Florence a few years back. Given that it's been two weeks and the water is still here and stagnant, uh, definitely shows me that those people were telling the truth. So looking in here, I mean, you can even see two tadpole, three tadpoles. And I'm sure there's a bunch of smaller things. Yeah, in fact, I see something smaller crawling around in there. And just a lot of debris. I'm gonna run it through these filters and see what we can find. So Brita uses this filter lid. And basically it has a straw filter built into it. Now it says, if I'm not mistaken, that this is not for purification and things like that, but it has this carbon filter which helps with some things. And so let's see how that does when we're just trying to filter out the junk that's in there. So we definitely have some junk in that. All right, so that looks a little discolored, but it definitely looks a lot better, although it's a smaller thing, so you won't be able to see that discoloration quite as much. But that does look to be quite a bit cleaner. So I'm going to take this other syringe and suck up some water. So the one on your left is what I sucked up just by itself through uh, as the control. And the one on the right is the one that came through the Brita filter. It does look like the Brita one might be a little bit cleaner. Though, it's really kind of difficult to tell. Now we're going to look at Grail. And I'll show you real quickly how that works. So this comes off. You have, this is what you scoop the water out of. And then this is the actual filter. So pops off on the bottom. It's got this inlet here all the all the way around and you attach it to the filtered canister there. This opens up. This is where your clean water is going to come out of and then you can drink out of this this uh, spout style lid here, the chug lid. And this, yeah it's just kind of a standard chug lid. Pretty terrible handle honestly. But let's, uh, let's fill this guy up and see how this goes. Try to not get the tadpole. So you open this up a little bit so that air can release. When you're pushing water in through this filter and it comes into this inner cavity, you need somewhere for the air to go out. You set it up like this. And you push on it. Takes quite a bit of force, but if you kind of lean into it, it's not really a problem. And so after you do that, then you've still got some water in here. That's the nasty water that you don't want. But then you have some cleaner water on this inner canister that you can drink out of. So I'm gonna take a sample of that and see how that comes out. Looks pretty good. So next is Lark. And this one, I don't really expect it to show too much because I didn't see too many creepy crawlies in there. And it really goes after things that are living uh, instead of trying to just filter out contents. But I'm gonna still do a sample of this and run it through this UV that it has built into the lid. So there's clearly some junk in there. 
So you push this button. It's hard to see out here, but it's shining blue right now. I'll try to show that inside real quick. So it's on its UV cycle right now. That's what the shining blue means. So give it a little bit and it should get through that in about, I don't know, 30 more seconds probably. So that means the UV cycle is done. So now I'm going to take this out and get a few samples out of it. So now we're going to do the one I'm kind of dreading, which is a live straw. I haven't found a great way with my setup to pull through this without actually sucking on it, covering it up with my finger and then dipping it over. So about to get a little dirty here, but for the sake of science, let's give it a go. So instead of sucking out of the tub, I am going to get a sample using this incredibly ergonomic mug, which y'all should totally check out sometime, called Moment Mugs. So I'm pouring some of that excess water coming in here. So there might be a little bit of backwash in there. It's not the best sampling method, but until I can get a better seal on the spout and maybe get a vacuum going on it or something like that, this is the method I've got to get a decent sample of water that has been purified through this life straw. And yeah, I am spitting out the water that um, I do end up sucking up. Be free, my friends. So I poured water from each filter into these Dixie bowls just to kind of spread it out a little bit and see what we can see. So this is the control. You can clearly see there's some junk in there. Yeah, it's just nasty looking. Lark, same way. It's not a filter. It's supposed to kill any kind of microbes or viruses and bacteria. I'm not sure what we're going to be able to see there. We got Life Straw, which does look a lot cleaner. It doesn't have any of that junk in it. The coloration is still a little bit off, but compared to the other ones, the coloration is a little bit lighter. You can't see any debris in the Brita, and it looks a lot cleaner as well. It just looks even lighter than the Life Straw. Grail actually looks the cleanest. I'm not going to lie, this water looks cleaner and clearer than any of the other ones on there. So first, let's use this TDS probe and see if there was any measurable results on the total dissolved solids. And this measures the conductivity of the water, which gives you some indications of uh, you know, how much salt and other chemicals might be in it. It's not necessarily the best metric in terms of determining filtration, but it might give us some ideas. So. Control water, 50, 49. Looks like it's averaging out around 50 parts per million. Lark should be exactly the same. Yeah, 47, so 48. Basically exactly the same. Life straw. Actually increased some, 54. Brita. Increased some to 56. And Grail. My last test was any indication this should be even higher. Yeah, 74. It's kind of interesting, you know, that's why total dissolved solids is not really the best metric when it comes to determining how well something filters or how safe it is. So just keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to do is do some water test strips. You put the strip in there and then you can compare it against basically a sliding scale of colors to determine different things like chlorine, iron, mercury, that kind of stuff. The way that you use them is you immerse the strip for two seconds, then promptly remove it. Do not shake off the excess fluid. Wait 15 seconds and then compare it against the color chart and read results. So here is what they look like. They all look pretty much the same. Once you get about halfway down there to that greenish one, that's really where I stopped getting consistent soaking on each one. All right, so I've got my microscope hooked up and it has this adapter that goes onto the lens and you plug this in it's just kind of a whichever micro usb i think and the cable plugs in and goes directly to my computer this first one this is going to be the control 
you can just see a lot of junk. I'm moving the, the plate a little bit. So everything that's moving when I, every so often, that's what's on the plate. The other things like the circle on the top middle and the left middle that are kind of fixed, those are things like dirt that I just can't get off of the frame. This is the Lark. So this one probably won't look much different than that last one, but let's do it anyways. Still a bunch of junk on there. You can really, really clearly see it. Life straw. And honestly, you can still see quite a bit of junk. Let's do the Brita. So it doesn't look like it has as many, but it's still, still got them on there. But it looks less concentrated. And so now let's look at Grail, which visually looks like the best one. So it still has some stuff in there, but it doesn't look nearly as concentrated as what we had before. There's definitely some, so there's definitely some on there. And keep in mind, some of this might be related to what's on the test plate. I did wipe each one off with some rubbing alcohol beforehand, but these test plates, you know, it's very possible that they do have some interference on them. I also did a second round of testing using a cover slip on the samples. A cover slip is a very thin plastic piece that flattens out the liquid, and the idea is that it can help you get a better image. I had some issues with that footage because of air bubbles and scratches on the cover slips. So I'm not going to show a lot of that, but the number of black spots that you could see with each filter and the concentration of the debris looked similar for each filter. So I don't really think it would have showed us much more anyways. So I really did this for my own curiosity. This is meant to be for entertainment purposes. Certainly there are some things with the tests I could have done better, but using a similar kind of method just based on what we could see visually grail did do pretty well the water looked notably cleaner uh, it really seemed like it did better than i thought it would compared to some of the other ones life straw probably has the biggest chance for some variables in there because of how i took the sample so i don't think we gave that one quite a fair shake you know lark i think still has its place it's not something you would want to use for this instance we really didn't get to see you know, small things swimming around in the water like I was hoping to. Overall, I think Grail would be the one I'd be the most comfortable with out of these ones that I compared. But yeah, I definitely wanted to get out here and at least give this a good try. Well, we had this nice, nasty pond behind our shop. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think.